All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the Tour Championship slate for this weekend. And it's it's sort of unusual uh, in a number of ways. Um, but it's not that unusual in, in the same sense. So first of all, uh, there are only uh, now 29 golfers, in, so it really reduces the amount of combinations that you can play which obviously means it's a little bit more difficult to have a unique lineup. Now, with that said, I think last season uh, they ran this event uh, and they ran the DK slate and, and I think only uh, two people tied for first. So it's, uh, it's very possible that you can get a big takedown. Um, the thing that is not really that confusing when you think about it, that people get confused about is the scoring of this. So the way the, uh, I'm probably making the, even this more complicated than it has to be even. The way the, the FedEx Cup works is based on your previous finishes, you get a certain amount of strokes to start this final um, event, okay? Uh, if you're in first, you get you start off like minus seven or something like that, right? And all that means is that if you're one of these guys that's, you know, that has a lot of points coming into this, you're going to start off ahead of everybody else, which means that your projection is going to be higher, you know, which also means probably that your salary is going to be higher. So it really doesn't make that much of a difference. OK, I mean, and people, again, because it's content, people want to be complicated They get all into this. This it's really not that big a deal. It's just like any other event in DFS. You have projections, you have ownership and you have lineup construction and you have to figure out the best way to make use of, of all three of those things. OK, does it doesn't matter where the projections were derived. It doesn't matter the structure of the tournament. All that and all that stuff has been factored into the projections already. And it was factored into the salaries when DraftKings came up with this, right? which is why you see the highest price guys are the guys with a lot of FedEx points. And they're going to start out with, with, a, with an advantage. But don't worry about that. It's just like when I talk about uh, DraftKings Showdown. People think about, well, why don't I play the guys that have been given the points already? before the round well yeah because it's factored into the price it's factored into the ownership it's factored into everything it's just like anything else okay in dfs you have a set of projections hopefully they're good all right and then you take a couple of stands you try to make some some unique lineups you try to get some leverage and be intelligent about it and it's no different than anything else with that said um i did put out projections for this uh, the exact same way that I always do, okay? And I'm using Saberson to run a bunch of lineups just like I always do. So one thing you could do, again, is if you can just go into, um, you know, go to TrueDFS, get, get my projections, or anybody's really, but you get mine, I thought mine are pretty good. Um, you put them into Saberson, like optimizer, throw some lineups together, and you could probably have a you know some uh, plus EV chance, right? However, there are things that you can do to give yourself a little bit better chance. And it's the same type of thing that I'm going to talk about when we get into NFL showdown and things like that. Um, it, one thing is this. When you're dealing with minimal with limited combinations, you do want to try your best to be unique. OK. And yes, you want to be unique in all DFS, but it's it's even more important when you have limited combinations. So one of the things that you could do is, and this is standard, is to intentionally leave money on the table, okay? Um, it, it's, it's, it, it, it takes advantage of the people that use optimizers that don't leave money on the table. You're gonna get more lineups that have say 48.8 or 48.7 or whatever it is, that maybe they don't project as well as some of the others, but considering how variant golf can be, um, it could be worth it to have a unique lineup as a but that projects four points worse than a lineup that is going to be duped by six people, for example, right? Um, so that's one thing you could do. And the other thing you could do is, if you want to know the truth, you could take just, you know, you could take a couple of stands. You could run a, you could run a build, and then you could just say, you know what, I want to lock in X and shuffle the rest, and maybe you get a little unique that way. Um, or you can set ownership limits and things like that. What I do is, again, for this particular event, I'm just going to rely on my projections. I'm going to run them into Saberson. And then I'm going to just kind of just gaze at it and see, you know, who I might want to have less of than I'm being, uh, I'm getting. And 
there's listen, it's not incredibly analytical to do it that way, but I think it's okay. I mean, golf is so variant that you're not going to kill yourself that much doing something like, you know, I don't feel like playing Adam Scott, for example, you know, um, or I don't want to have that much of, I don't know, John Rahm or something like that. Um, and if you're making kind of decisions like that are not based on analytics and not based on projections, maybe just maybe you're forcing a little uniqueness in that's worth it. Okay. So with that said, I am going to go through um, based on my projections, at least who I think the best plays are in this. But remember who the best plays are is not exactly who you're supposed to play because, you know, you have all kinds of ownership considerations. Um, and I am going to go through it and I am going to give you my one big, you know, just for fun, I'm going to give you my one big leverage play that I'm going to be using. Um, that's really going to, I'm really going to need that one to win huh, for me to, for me to make money. All right. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, what's this? Oh, this is my, my raw data. So the, first of all, the player that is going to project, let's get right to it at the very, very top of the, of the, of the value rankings is going to be Aaron Wise. I mean, he is just completely mispriced down here at 5,400. And he's also going to be owned quite a bit. Um, I've seen ownership projections anywhere from 35 up to 60%. Um, and what I would say is that if you played Aaron Wise, I would, I would really try to make the rest of your lineups um, or the rest of your lineup uh, much less chalky. Uh, those are the lineups where you really want to leave money on the table, that you want to set ownership caps and things like that. Um, with respect to some of these others, let's go through this. The next probably highest known guy who I think is a very, you know, kind of a tough fade is, um, is going to be Rory. Um, I have him at about 30% ownership. Uh, I'm going to have much, much more of that. Um, I think he's just kind of mispriced and everybody knows it, you know, relative to some of these other guys above him. So he's going to be pretty popular as well. Um, but he kind of fits the builds really, really well. Okay. Let's put it that way. Um, who else at the top? Rom is fine. Cam Smith is fine. I'll just cut right to it. The, the, the one guy, and this is just a stand I'm taking that I am going to have very, very little of is going to be Scotty Scheffler. I mean, not for any real reason. <laughs> like he's, he just projects a little bit worse. And I have to take some stands somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play very, very little Scotty Scheffler, which is going to give me a lot of combinations of these other, of these other guys. Okay. Um, and that's just the stand that I'm going to take. He doesn't look that bad, but he looks the worst of all these guys above 10 K. So I'm going to end up with very, very little of him. Um, let's we identify a couple of others and I'll get to my, my, uh, my, my hoodoo play. Um, I think that Tom Hoagie is probably an okay play at 5k. Um, again, if you want to pivot away from Aaron Wise, I think that's one way to do it. Um, I think Tom Hoagie, look, he's, he's going to be a worse play. Okay. Uh, than Hoagie, excuse me, than Aaron Wise, but I don't think by that much. Um, so you're going to get a big ownership discount. I think I think he's worth taking a shot at. Let's see some of the others. Um, Mm, I guess Sun JM looks pretty good, but even he's 22% owned. It's going to be really, really tough to find a low owned guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut right to it. I'm going to tell you my highest owned player. Let me just confirm that before, just so I don't get accused of being a liar. And when I say highest owned, I mean highest owned relative to the field. My highest owned guy relative to the field, well, it's Rory. But then it's JT Poston. Um, this is the guy I'm going to take the big stand that I'm going to be significantly overexposed to him. And honestly, if he doesn't do well, I'm probably not going to do well. Um, for the same reasons that I picked Tom Hoagie, I just feel as though his, you know, he's just as he's just as good as Aaron Wise, and maybe he projects a little bit worse. But the ownership discount you're going to get probably about fifty percent ownership discount on him, probably like. You know, 50% to 25% or something like that. I think that's good enough. So I'm going to be taking a big stand on him. Uh, he's been, I can give you all the reasons, the underlying reason he's been playing well, he's, he's in good form and all that stuff and all the metrics point to him, 
But quite honestly, it's just because he's, he's in the same price range as Aaron Wise. He's going to be much lesser owned, and I'm just going to be pounding on that, right? Um, some other guys, again, this is just what I'm doing that are just uh, I'm going to have leverage over the field on. Well, certainly Rory. He's probably my top guy. And then there's Poston. And then JT, I'm going to be over the field on him. I'll be over the field on Cam Smith. And I guess those are the ones where I have the most leverage, if that's if that means anything. Um, I have guys that are high owned, but, you know, the fields are going to own them too. Um, I mean, I have guys that are uh, I have a lot of ownership and some players, but they're going to be owned by the field as well. So I, I don't even want to bring that up. So let's just go back and review. Um, again, short video, short field, not a lot here. You can either run projections and use the different optimizer tips I, I described, such as leaving money on the table, things like that. Or, you know, if you just want to just get right to the picks, hey, you want to ride with me? You'll take Rory and JT Poston. <laughs> those, are, those are my two highest owned guys. Um, then I do have a lot of Aaron Wise as well, but JT Poston is the one who's going to be really, really going to need him to do well, him and Rory. If not, I'm probably going to lose, but yeah, that's fine. Um, good luck in the final tour event of the year. And uh, that'll do it.